Prior to becoming Muslim, my life was empty, ya Shaykh. Oh, wallahi, I had nothing in my life. And Allah, He put it in my heart to, uh, to try to find out if it's possible to travel faster than the speed of light. When I bowed down, it was like I was bowing in front of Allah. SubhanAllah, I haven't had that kushur since. But wallahi, something changed. I was not the same, ya Shaykh. Allahumma thabbithum ala al-Iman. وارزقهم أعلى الجنان كما رزقتهم هداية القرآن بالقرآن اهتدي بالقرآن اهتدي في رحبه تحلو الحياة شوقا إلى المولى هتاي أسلمت روحي للإناء نور الحياة First and foremost, uh, my name is uh, Farouk uh, or Andrew McDermott. Alhamdulillah, uh, I was born and raised in uh, Essex, which is just outside of London. I was raised in a family of, we could call ourselves agnostic. We used to believe in God, uh, but we didn't really follow a particular religion. However, I was baptized. Uh, so we was kind of like a mess in terms of uh, our religion. Andrew. أسلم قبل خمس سنوات بسبب هداية آيات القرآن العلمية وبراهين وضعها الله سبحانه وتعالى في هذا القرآن. My father he left uh, when I was one years old and I have an older brother and an older sister at that time yeah and he left and uh, my mum she raised us three alone and then she got remarried alhamdulillah and uh, she had we had her son uh, she had a son sorry and um, his name is uh, Richard. Prior to becoming Muslim, my life was empty, yes, Shaykh. Oh, wallahi, I had nothing in my life. But if you looked at me, you would think I had everything, you know? I had a nice car, I had the good money, I wore nice suits. I was everything you would want to be as a young man, subhanAllah. كان يعيش أندرو في مدينة عنصرية جدا يعيش فيها البيض ويكرهون السود والمسلمين ثم انتقل أندرو إلى مدينة أخرى اسمها سلاو في هذه المدينة تبدلت مفاهيم أندرو وتغيرت نظرته للحياة And Allah, he put it in my heart to, uh, to try to find out if it's possible to travel faster than the speed of light because I wanted to time travel and um, I started researching uh, different books I went to the library, I used to go online and uh, to cut a long story short, I came to the conclusion that you cannot. But there was one problem with my final verdict, and that was those people who predicted the future. Because how is it possible that someone can accurately predict events that have yet to happen and not know that information because it hasn't yet existed? <laughs> تحلو الحياة شوقا إلى المولى أتيت أسلمت روحي للإله نور الحنايا والطلوق لله أعلى تعرف أندرو في مدينة سلاو على صديق له اسمه عمر وهو بريطاني مسلم من أصل باكستاني فأخبر عمر أندرو أن النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم كان يتنبأ بالمستقبل فأهداه كتاب يتكلم عن الإسلام اسم هذا الكتاب دليل الإسلام المبسط أندرو هنا هي هي لاكت الريد so I thought you know I can't give him Quran because um, it's too, you know it's too big for him so I thought I'd give him a smaller book which was uh, the brief uh, illustration of uh, Islam. The first uh, thing I remember reading was an ayat 
where Allah in Surah Al-Mu'minun where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions how he created man uh, from a sensitive drop of blood and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, created man from something alaq يقول تعالى ولقد خلقنا الإنسان من سلالة من طين إلى آخر هذه الآيات فما معنى العلاقة؟ which in the translation I read it meant uh, a leech yeah which attaches a, a blood clot and something suspended maybe from something above you know for those who are what who, who might be listening to this I want them to go and find out what a leech is and go find out what a leech does and go find out how a leech lives its life yeah and then, and then go look at the human embryo. Because I already knew about leeches. I knew that this could be from anyone, it could not be from anyone else except from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because how uh, a leech works is it attaches itself to a host, yeah? It's like a parasite. So it attaches itself to the host victim and it will extract the blood, yeah? And that blood, when it enters into the leech, it does not clot. It clots, sorry, it clots because it's not circulating. And when you try to remove the leech, you can't. You might, the best way is to burn them off, Billah, or to pull them off, or to let them have their drink and then they'll come off naturally. Yeah. Now, how Allah created the man in its very first stage, because Allah created man in stages. The first stage is the alaq stage. Allah makes man attached to the womb of the mother. And then we will establish a connection between our mum which will later on become our umbilical cord, yeah? But in this first stage, we attach and we make that connection. That's the first thing we do, yeah? Then we extract blood from her and that blood inside us clots because we have no heart yet to pump the blood to circulate it. And when mum goes jogging, she doesn't, we do not fall off. When she goes up the stairs, we don't fall off like the leech. And we will fall off or come out when our time is run out, just like the leech. The first thing I questioned was, is this Quran as old as you say it is? In the time of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they could have an opinion. You know, the Greek philosophers they had their yes. opinions, yes. yeah, and the the, the British, the, 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 everyone had an opinion. But Allah didn't have an opinion. Allah had the truth, and He said, "This is how I did it." Now you can say what you want, but this is how I made you, yeah. And for me, fourteen hundred years after this, this is a a, a sign, a true, a miracle of uh, the Prophet peace be upon him to carry these words from them times to now. The only way I know for sure what is said is true is because I have the scientific technology to prove it. I have the microscopes and I can go and see that what Allah says is true. من الطبيعي جدا إذا اكتشف الإنسان أي شيء أو اخترع أي شيء يذهب ويفتخر به أمام الناس والنبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم بالرغم من الحقائق العلمية الكثيرة في القرآن كان يقول أن هذه الحقائق والمعجزات من الله سبحانه وتعالى والله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن خاطب النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم فقال قل لا أملك لنفسي نفعا ولا ضرا إلا ما شاء الله ولو كنت أعلم الغيب لاستكثرت من الخير وما مسني السوء إن أنا إلا نذير وبشير لقوم يؤمنون فكيف يقولون أن هذا القرآن هو كلام محمد يا للمدى شوان حتى كساه الندى والقلب قد أرضاك يا رب حين اهتدى يا رب حين اهتدى Then the next ayat uh, that really affected my heart was when Allah سبحانه وتعالى mentions the man who is the liar and he says, no, if this man does not stop lying, I'll take him by him, the nasiyah, the lying sinful nasiyah, and throw him in the fire. Why did Allah say that the front of the head was lying? Why Allah described the front of the head as lying? Yeah, He could have said anything. Yeah, Allah described it as such because that is where the, the lie originates. And there's many scientific uh, analysis of the brain where we have the MRI scan, we can go inside and uh, they do tests where they'll get you to say certain information and I'll see where it originates from the brain. And they found that the front of the head is where the lie originates from. So when you're telling a lie when you're khadab, this part lights up. So that's why Allah described it as such because who made the brain? Allah. Allah made the brain. <laughs>
الصدى وفاضت العينا تجيب ذاك الندى بالقرآن برحمه تحلو الحياة بعد هذه الآيات والدلائل انشرح قلب أندرو للإسلام ولكنه كان مترددا بالإقدام على النطق في الشهادة وفي يوم من الأيام So this is where I called brother Jawad <coughs> and uh, I said there's a, there's a brother here who's, who's willing to take shahada but he, he's, he's afraid of what his family will say and Umar told me uh, who was his friend he said this guy is very close to Islam, very close, you know, he's curious about it. So I said to, uh, I said to my, my friend Omar, I said, well, if he's very close, we need to talk to him. It's very important that we need to talk to him. And uh, one particular weekend, we all got together and we went for a little jog because we were doing Keep Fit. I kind of didn't want to go, but he convinced me and we went. And uh, him and his friends, they went ahead and I was at the back. They were, they were gone. Mm. And another man, his name is Jawad, he was at the back. He's like me, he's not fast, yeah? So we went to the park and we were running. We were running and I said, look, brother, I can't, I can't keep up with them brothers. So I said, look, if I can't run with you in the dunya, I'll ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so, so we can either run or fly together in paradise. And my child inside me said, Who doesn't want to fly? I said, I want to fly. So when we went back to my home, I said to him, You know, if I believe in Islam in my heart, but I don't, you know, become Muslim. Will I still go to this place, Jannah? He said, no. I said, why not? He said, because you have to have three things for your Iman to be full. Oh. You have to have on your tongue, in your qalb, and in your action, your, your actions of a believer, in your salat. Ta -ta -ta -ta. So I said, so if I go outside and a bus hits me, do I, do I go to Jannah? He said, nah. I said, what do I have to do then? He said, you have to say some words. I said, tell me them, I will say them now, quick. And I said, what's in your heart? Just say it on your tongue. Say it on your tongue, bruv. And he said, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Wa ashadu an Muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. And we embraced him as our brother. And from that day onwards, he's been my beautiful brother ever since, inshallah. I love him for the sake of Allah. And I hope, I hope Allah Azza wa Jal allows us to really fly together in Jannah, inshallah. بهداية من فضل ربي جهاله وقلبي يخضر إحساسي ودربي وملامحي حين انتديت. So after I took shahada, uh, a lot of the Muslims I was with, they, سبحان الله العظيم, they um, came to me and thought I would remain the same. But wallahi, something changed. I was not the same, ya khi. And uh, I remember the second day after shahada, I went to the masjid and I prayed two rakat. And by Allah, Allah, you are listening. Wallahi lawzi. When I prayed them two rakat, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. It was like I was in front of Allah. That's how it felt. I've never, even today, I can't get the kushur I had it when I became Muslim. When I bowed down, it was like I was bowing in front of Allah. Subhanallah, I I haven't had that for sure since. Subhanallah, I 
ألقت لنا كلتا يديه ألقيت أوزاري عليه يا رب فاغفر ما عصيه مرت والدة أندرو بتجربة سيئة جدا مع والده الذي انفصل عنها حيث التزم والد أندرو بالمسيحية بشكل غير طبيعي So my mum's experience with religion or Christianity or any, anyone who says that they believe in Allah is that they are Majnoon. <laughs> so when I run her and I said, Mum, this was about two weeks after I took Shahada, I said, Mum, I'm a Muslim and I have accepted Allah into my life. Yeah? She said, just like your father. I said, no, 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 no. I'm nothing like him. I'm a different person and uh, I will come and, you know, see you. للأسف, كان المسجد القريب من منزل أندرو فيه شباب مسلمين يتجمعون في هذا المسجد ولكن كان عندهم بعض الجهل فقالوا لأندرو إذا دخلت في الإسلام يجب عليك أن تلبس الزي الإسلامي أنا أذكر الزي الإسلامي يعني الثوب والقحفية والغترة وغيره ولكن هذا من الجهل لكل مجتمع عاداته وتقاليده ولبسه هذا ليس في الإسلام يا أحبابنا فذهب أندرو إلى والدته وأهله بهذا الزي so I went home, and my mum was shocked, all of my, my brother was shocked, my sister, my f uh, father-in-law, he, he was shocked, everyone was shocked, uh, sorry, my stepfather. And uh, I thought that I would relate to them the ayat of Allah, and they would say, SubhanAllah, Ashhadu la ilaha illallah. I thought this was very easy, yeah? Uh, but it wasn't like that, unfortunately. My, br my eldest brother, he was uh, very rude with me, and it took a lot of patience to deal with that. Uh, but Alhamdulillah, now he's much better. Um, my mother, she, she rejected everything. My brother Isa, he was very rude with me. He's younger brother. And I said to him, you better watch what you say because the Malaika, they are writing Allah. what you're saying. And he said, what are the Malaika? And I said, they're the angels that Allah has created. And I said, and Allah also created a being called Al-Jinn. So I told him about the Jinn and he said, I want to be a Muslim. Allah. And everyone was so angry with him. Allah. And he took shahada, Allahu Akbar, that night after two minutes of da'wah. Alhamdulillah. Mashallah, mashallah. Ahabba Andrew al Quran, Fahu wa yakra'uhu bi shaklin yomi, wa yata'allamu al Arabiya al An, wa yata'dabbaru hadha al Quran bi shaklin ajib. Another one that really got to me was uh, Surah al Baqarah, ayah number uh, two. Mm. Yeah. This ayah, Allah, this ayah, Allah, he negates any mistake for the whole book. You know, a uh, scholar, he will say when he writes a book, if there's mistake in this, contact. And I will change the mistake. Make a contact with me, I'll change it. Allah says, Allah. يفسر هذه الآيات التي ممكن تغيب عني وعنكم في فهمها. Many Muslims, unfortunately, they don't have that taste. They have never tasted it. They've just been put in the mosque to teach, to learn how to read, and they will hit if they don't. They are hit around the head. They don't know Tawheed. They don't know who Allah is. You ask them who Allah is, and they can't tell you. But they know صورة الإخلاص. <laughs> but they don't know who Allah is. سبحان <laughs> الله. اتجه فاروق إلى دعوة من حوله. وعمل في الإعلام وأنتج البرامج التلفزيونية وفي أيام العطل يذهب فاروق إلى الهايد بارك لدعوة الناس هناك إلى الإسلام I do a lot of uh, TV programs for different organizations around the world, yeah, mashallah. mashallah. And also in Ramadan I feature heavily on, on live programming here in the UK and alhamdulillah we've had, I think live on TV we've had nearly 10, maybe 10 shahadas now. From people who've been watching and they ring up and they become Muslim. Allah is a good person. He said, 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 you consider for one moment, just one second, that there is an Akhirah. Yeah? You don't believe in it, but what if you're wrong? If you consider that for one second that you are wrong, is it not better to take 
uh, precaution, like when you wear your seatbelt. Take precaution, give religion a moment. And I'm not talking about a uh, religion of different hodgepodge beliefs and rituals, I'm talking about Islam. Give the Quran time, read it. If after you read it, you disbelieve in it, then that's up to you. But if you want, if you do read it and something changes in your life like it did for me, then it's only going to be for the better of you. For my wish, uh, if you're talking in terms of this society, yeah, for, for the local people, my wish would be to be able to provide them with a facility that encourages the youth to come and learn about Islam. Mm. And sometimes we have to dress up da'wah to make that happen. And by doing so, maybe if we had a cafe or we had something like a gym that also provided facilities to learn mm. with a sheikh Islam. about Islam, I think this would be a great benefit for the people of Islam. <laughs> داعما لهم ويحقق لهم امنياتهم باذن الله عز وجل وباذن الله عز وجل امين يا شيخ تتحقق هذه الامنيات بسم الله الله يبارك ربيعي أنس أيامي صديقي بوح أحلامي شفاء الهم والشقوى يداوي جرحي دامي ربيعي أنس أيامي صديقي بوح أحلامي شفاء الهم والشقوى يداوي جرحي دامي ولما تهت ثم أتيت لدرب كلام رب البيت وجدت النور والسلوى مع القرآن اهتديت مع القرآن اهتديت